Hi, teacher friend. This is Denise Lee, the creator of the Accounting Simple Startup. Thank you so much for the purchase and for trusting me with your educational resources. This launch page will take you to links to a student file for general journal or multi-column student files. I use the general journal, so I'll be giving you a tour of the general journal file. The multi-column file is exactly the same with the exception of the multi-column journals where transactions are required from students. You also will have two links for teacher's keys. They're actually good student examples of project files you can use as teacher's keys, and you also are receiving a rubric with this resource. So let's get started with a tour of your simple startup. When I start this project, I, I start it by launching this video and showing this video of me in Central Park giving a great introduction to the students of they are ready to impart. This just gets them excited about the project. And then I take them to this slide. I project this on my Promethean board or my whiteboard as well. And I explain to them that they will have $45,000 to invest in this simple startup. They're going to have to select one of these simple startups for their business. And I give them some examples that they can choose from. I don't limit my students to just these examples. I had a student this year who was interested in going into a dog grooming business of her own. So she did a service truck that was a dog grooming truck. The only exception is, um, or exclusion is, I don't allow my students to do a truck kiosk or cart that's going to be selling merchandise where they will have to have inventory on their shelves and a merchandising business. I really want them to stay a service business. After they select what type of business they're going to do, I suggest showing this video, again, of me in New York City, the simple startup capital of the world, explaining how important it is that the outside of their business, their facade, so to speak, is inviting for their customers. This file is a clip art file that is full of clip art that students can pick from. I give a little bit of a suggestion on how they can create this, but they're going to flip through this file and they're going to find something that hits their personality and meets their needs. I also don't limit students to this file as far as their creativity. If they find a truck online uh, or a cart online that they want to use, they may. This one, um, I had a student use this one and uh, she did her own creation with it, which turned out to be beautiful. After students select some sort of a facade for their business, the last two slides on this file is just full of clip art that they can simply copy and paste and put in their file. So this is where they will copy and paste the food truck cart or kiosk that they like, and then they will add all of these great embellishments to really make it look awesome. This is an example of a student file. You can see that she added all of these different components, all of these different components to her file. When you want to layer, you simply go to order and you put it in the front or the back um, to layer things. After the students do their facade, then they are going to create an entrepreneurial profile. Here they're going to drop a professional picture of themselves, a picture that is um, either their waist up or their shoulders up with a professional looking smile. This gives me an opportunity as a business teacher to discuss um, what is a professional photograph and what isn't a professional photograph. And then they're going to put their name here as the entrepreneur behind their simple startup. I prompt them to use a font and font color to match the personality of their business. This is where students are going to do a business briefing. I highly recommend that you are constantly reminding students to use these tips, these nudges, uh, the content in the borders to walk them through this file. 
All of the information in the borders of these files are there to help students to be as successful as they can with this accounting project adventure. Name of their business, of course, this is the type of the business. I'm specifically asking them, is it a service business, manufacturing, merchandising, extracting? Of course, they're going to be service businesses, but I want students to realize that on their own. So they can put service business that's a food truck or service business that's a flower cart or kiosk. Here, they're going to put the type of business and so forth. I'm asking them to insert a clip art that symbolizes their brand in the corner because I did print these out. They looked absolutely beautiful on my wall in my classroom. Now it's time to set up their business now that they have the facade for their business. And I ask them to go on actual places that would be selling supplies to food trucks. Now up here, whenever they are doing their food truck, I do prompt them to go to websites that are selling used food trucks to get a real cost of what a food truck would cost them or a kiosk would cost them, whatever type of business they're doing. Even though I do encourage them to use the clip art file, they can use the picture of that actual uh, cart, kiosk, or food truck if they wish. Down here, again, they're going to pick two vendors that they are buying from that they actually would be buying their supplies from. Here is a video again, filmed in New York City, of me explaining that supplies are consumables, things that they're going to be purchasing frequently, things you use up like cups, condiments, paper plates, uh, things that are going to be uh, thrown away or consumed. Here's a link that is a resource link that will give some students some examples and give them some ideas of what a food truck needs. Because remember, these are young students. So of course they may not realize what they need. So this is a little bit of research that they can do to see what they might need for their particular business. I give my students 600 to $800 budget. You can see this is editable. You can click in it and change these numbers if you wish. Most of my students were able to go within the $600 and $800 range. The reason I say to spend at least $600 is because my students were buying like a pack of paper plates. They were buying a pack of 50 cups. I tell them that food trucks are busy. You're going to want to buy 500 cups. You're going to want to buy 800 plates. What happens if you run out in the middle of a busy day? So this prompts them to buy enough supplies to get them through a busy weekend at a festival. I also asked them not to exceed this amount, but there were some students that said to me, Mrs. Lee, I really need to spend more than the 850. Just like a bank loan, if they could justify um, the intent of spending more and make it convincing, I acted as a banker and I increased this budget for that student. I did the same with equipment. I gave them a budget amount. Again, this is editable for each teacher to change if they wish, um, but most of my students were able to stay within this range. But I did have to give out a lot of bank loans. And that's when I'm walking around and bantering with my students and asking them to justify why I should increase this budget amount. A lot of them made sense, so I increased their budget amount. You can see that, again, there is a resource link to a video filmed in New York City for students to watch. They are closed captioned, so if they're watching them in class, prompt them to mute their computer and read the instructions. And then here is a food truck um, equipment list that they may want. And I, again, prompt them to go to equipment for food trucks. There are certain cash registers and everyone really will need a cash register. It's a bit of equipment they might not think about. Um, there's cash registers just for food truck vendors, small kiosks, ice cream carts that does not take a lot of space. Now they have to think through their accounts. What accounts will I need for my business? I give them a lot of ideas, prompts, and so forth here, and a good example of what a chart of accounts looks like. So again, constantly prompt your students to look in these margins for tips and tricks and content that will help them be successful. 
Now they're going to start spending money and making money. That's exactly why we're in business. So you can see these are transactions for April 1st, April 2nd, April 3rd, April 4th, April 5th, and so on. Um, the students are to read the transactions and you can see here that you pay cash for a food truck, use the sale price of whatever you found, and that will be back on that slide number three you pay cash for equipment. They're actually going to be using the amount of equipment that they spent. In this student example, you can see that Gia spent a total of $1,010 on equipment and $680 on supplies. So everyone's amounts are going to be different for these transactions. I'm trying to make this as real world and real life as possible. They're going to finish their transactions and then they're going to do a net worth statement. Their net worth statement, again, is unique for their business. They're using the same cash amount and petty cash amount. Uh, the food truck cart price is gonna be theirs, their supply uh, amount, their equipment amount. And then I did give them amounts for liabilities. They are gonna use the liabilities, the vendors that they feel they're going to be purchasing from. Um, so they're using those names, but I gave them amounts. This is making it easier for me to check as a teacher when I'm checking these files. Now we all have to meet in the end. All their income statements and all their balance sheets are going to be the same. I explained to my students that time has gone on, balances have changed. And again, I have to make this doable for teachers to check 27, the, seven of them. I had 27 in my accounting class to check. Everyone's income statement and everyone's balance sheet is going to be the same. So you can see here that Gia's transactions, you can see her chart of accounts, you can see her net worth statement, her net worth, she is now worth after the difference of liabilities and assets, $4,860. And you can see here that her income statement, um, these are her component percentages. We talk about that. Every ones are going to be the same. And of course, if a student was doing their own balance sheet, it wouldn't balance. So I needed to make sure that I was teaching to GAP, the generally accepted accounting principles in our balance sheet really needed to balance. So you can see here, I dropped some hints. You want to take your capital from your capital amount, which is on here. You want to take your capital, subtract your drawing, and add your net income from here in order to get the capital that goes on here. So this is super important to point out to students. Very few would have been able to get this on their own without this little nudge, this little tip here. Um, so make sure you point that out to your students so that they are successful in balancing their balance sheet. Again, I put a good example of a student file in here so that you can see um, what a good example looks like. And I also included a grading rubric, which again is completely editable. Feel free to make it your own, change uh, the, the point values if you wish, but my projects were 100 points. There were 10 competencies from doing a supply inventory, chart of accounts, net worth statement, income statement, balance sheet, um, really helping students through this project with those tips and those nudges in the border. This is something different than I have ever done with my accounting class before. And honestly, it was a gift to my kids because it was making accounting really connect with the real world. We know it's the language of business. And when the students were done with this file, they knew it as well. Again, my teacher friend, thank you so much for trusting me with your educational resources. I certainly appreciate it. And I wish you the best of luck in this accounting journey with your students.